Microbes are called microbes for a reason. They are microorganisms that cause disease or break down larger substances. And the name microorganisms denotes that these creatures are microscopic. They can only be seen under the microscope and not with the naked eye. But what happens when we do discover a microbe that can be seen with the naked eye and very easily? Not a colony of microbes, but a single cell. This is where scientists are today, having discovered the largest bacterium ever observed. This one, which was discovered in the Caribbean island of Guadalupe, reaches the size and shape of a human eyelash about 2 centimeters, despite just being a single cell. This newly discovered bacteria is thousands of times larger than all of the other species of bacteria that we know, and it's an anomaly. One of the lead researchers of this discovery described this bacteria as being like meeting another human being who is the size of Mount Everest. Scientists have always thought bacteria were very simple and cannot grow too big in size. So what exactly is happening here? The name of this bacteria is Theo Margarita magnifica and despite being a single cell, it is actually quite complex in structure. We know what a cell roughly looks like. It contains organelles within that execute metabolic and cellular functions and this works fine as long as the cell is small. But once a cell grows in size and volume, its different components that have to interact with each other start floating and swimming haphazardly around. There needs to be a mechanism that will enable all of these different components to come together whenever necessary so that they can undergo required chemical reactions. This is when compartmentalization started to evolve in simple single cells. In this part of our explanation, prokaryotes and eukaryotes come in. Prokaryotic cells are those where there is no true nucleus, one that is bound by a membrane and stores genetic information. Eukaryotic cells, by comparison, do have this and thus they have DNA and they also grow on to become multicellular. Eukaryotes are not always multicellular, there are also unicellular eukaryotes like protists that have a true nucleus. But the main distinguishing feature is that eukaryotes have compartments within to store or work with certain organelles that are always present where they should be. This is not the case with prokaryotes where all the material inside the cell is swimming around in the cytoplasm haphazardly. For the longest time, in our scientific literature, bacteria had been only prokaryotic. They were just single cells, not complex enough to be anything more than that. But starting from the 90s, we started to notice anomalies. Scientists were starting to discover larger and larger bacteria that was different from the norm. And these were still unicellular. Bacteria typically lives in colonies. Each cell is an individual bacteria, but they live together and form filaments. So a few years ago, when scientists in the Guadalupe Islands in the Caribbean discovered these thin white filaments on top of dead leaves, they thought they were looking at fungi or some other eukaryotic life. But when they looked under the microscope, they realized that not only were they looking at bacteria, what they were looking at was in fact a single cell and it was a single organism, not a colony. Studying it more, scientists realized that the bacterium has a very unusual and complex structure. The cell has many different compartments within its cell membranes, which are used by the cell to produce energy, which at times function like a nucleus and hold DNA, and perform other functions that we've seen in eukaryotic cells in terms of compartmentalization. Typically, a bacteria which is just one cell will have only one bit of DNA. But this one has thousands and thousands of pieces of DNA molecules that are folded and tucked away inside these membrane pockets that resemble a nucleus. The bacteria also synthesizes protein from its own DNA, which in turn enables the single cell to grow larger and larger. This has never been seen before in bacteria. This is completely novel and scientists have been stumped. 
Unfortunately, it's been a very difficult task for scientists to understand more. They have been unable to culture or grow this bacterium in the lab and it has not successfully replicated in the laboratory. Scientists also haven't understood how it grows in the wild. Anytime they needed a sample for analysis, they had to go back to the site where they acquired their sample and then get a new one. But that has since become a problem as well. The bacteria seems to have completely disappeared from the site where they were first sampled and scientists have no clue where they went or when they'll be back or where else they might be found. Bacteria were discovered for the first time about 350 years ago by the Dutch cloth merchant Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, who, apart from textiles and fabric, had also developed a very keen interest in lenses. He became so good at lens making that he had the best lenses in the world in the mid-1600s. He beat even Robert Hooke, his contemporary who was studying all kinds of physics and optics and was doing early pioneering work with lenses and microscopes. But Leeuwenhoek managed to achieve a magnification that was 300 times more powerful than Hooke's microscope and he did this in secret. In the 1670s, he started to explore the microbial world and he documented the first bacterium by simply scraping his teeth and then looking at the dental plaque under his lenses. He was shocked to see bacteria swimming about. He had been writing to the Royal Society for a few years about all of his discoveries from beneath the lenses, but his credibility started to be questioned when he wrote to them for the first time about microbial life in 1676. Eventually, in a few months, the Royal Society dispatched a team to verify exactly what he had said. And when they witnessed this bacteria for themselves under the microscope, a year later, the Royal Society acknowledged the existence of microbial life for the first time in scientific literature. Since 1677, we've discovered numerous viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and other forms of unicellular life. And we've been discovering a handful of unusual properties about single cells and just how big they can get. There are other large single cells that we know of in the biological world. The ostrich egg is considered to be the largest cell in the animal kingdom, of course, as long as it's unfertilized. It is about 150 millimeters wide and its volume is equal to about the volume of 25 hen eggs. Ostrich eggs are the largest eggs found in the world today by absolute size. But compared to the proportion of the bird that lays them, they are in fact the smallest relative to the size of the bird. But the ostrich egg is just a simple cell, it's not an organism. The largest single-celled organism is an algae called Cholerpa taxifolia. It's a seaweed that is found in the Pacific and Indian Oceans and it is also often used in aquariums. This algae is a really powerful invasive species that can kill off entire native ecosystems wherever it goes. It is physically a single cell containing many nuclei. But we still have only a handful of examples of such cells of really large sizes. Clearly, there has to be something that bridges the gap between extremely microbial life and large multicellular life that we are used to. And it seems we are just upon the cusp of this discovery. What's very interesting about this bacterial finding is that maybe we are indeed going to stumble across dozens of unicellular bacteria that are easily visible to the naked eye and grow to more complex forms. After all, we already know that a majority of microorganisms and microbes are still undiscovered. And even these large single cells we know are considered to be anomalies, as is this particular large bacterium. But maybe they're not so uncommon. We just really haven't looked and found them. They might continue to be called micro this and micro that, but they might not necessarily remain so. Who knows? Probably in the future, biologists are going to be documenting large macro microorganisms that have never been seen before and which require us to fundamentally alter what we understand about the limits of microscopic life. <laughs>